Welcome back everybody and once again I'm a filthy mess because I've been working. Welcome to my studio. We're going to talk about lights, not lighting. We'll get into that later. Let's talk about lights um, and some of the most incredible lights you'll ever use for photography. The great portrait photographers the early 1900s were using Fresnel or Fresnel, if you don't like the American pronunciation, lighting. This is the lighting that was available. These are the big studio lights, spotlights, the big floods. This is known by uh, kilowatts, KW. This is a 2KW, 2 kilowatt bulb in it. This is a 1KW spot. This monster is a 5KW, 5,000 watts of power. Massive amount of heat. I can't run these in the original form on my home lights. But the great studio photographers in the 1930s, 1940s, those incredible Hollywood glamour portraits, this is what they were using. Nothing high-tech, no strobes. This was it. Photography got cheaper in, in its look in the 50s when things went to strobes. We're in a real transition phase right now. Now the big thing is big flat panel LED lights optimized for digital still and digital video. Fantastic. These are dinosaurs. They're hitting the market dirt cheap. This set of three that I just got, I got them for $25 a piece with the stands. They started life in ABC Studios in New York City. They came to a local ABC affiliate. Then they were donated to a university that's got a fantastic uh, film department. These have been used on news broadcasts, first run feature movies, uh, hit TF television shows. These have been through the works with just these old lights. They're dinosaurs now. Nobody wants them. They're getting rid of these dirt cheap. And this is the most incredible light for portrait you'll ever see. Inside of these, you have what's called a lamp, lamp housing or a lamp holder. This is a 2,000 watt tungsten lamp. Incredible amount of heat, massive power draw. And this is the lamp fixture or the lamp holder. You have to convert this to run on a modern bulb. I'm not, the little lawyer in the back of my mind is going, liability. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. It's not a shop class. I'm not teaching shop safety or machine practice. But remove all this stuff. Grind this little plate flat. And build something that looks more like this. Simple fixture available at any good hardware store and a bulb. This run 120 volts, 500 watt maximum. You can get the 500, 300, 250s, 100s, all these photo floods from B&H Photo for four to six dollars a piece. Easy. I can run, now run these on my house lighting by just Pulling out the old fixture and making it look like this. One thing you want to watch, sorry, we are shooting on the fly. When you build it, make sure that this bulb, the center of the bulb lines up with the center of that lens. If you're using a short little household bulb, it's going to be down here. You'll have to raise this. If it's too tall, you got to come up with something totally different. But you want this right in the center or you get a weird oval bulb, uh, oval light on the, on the other end. I did these conversions for $20 and most of that was $12 for the cord. Uh, about $15, $12 for the cord, $2 or $3 for the fixture, and then just order bulbs from B&H. These are just the most incredible light. They're fun to use. They're inexpensive just look at your local ads your local classifieds check ebay check all the sources sometimes they're really expensive sometimes they're dirt cheap the downside is they're freaking huge if you got a little tiny apartment studio unless you want these as some sort of artsy uh decoration that's a problem they're monsters the new stuff we're building these little flat panels are fantastic but they're up to like two thousand dollars a piece 25 bucks, and I'm shooting with the same light patterns as George Harrell and those masters in the 30s. Thanks. We'll talk about something else next week.